Well, welcome to MC Podcast, episode 23. And so we want to thank you for listening today. Today we're down at our uh, production shop down in Owen, Illinois. And so we've got several guests with us today. And so I'm just going to kind of let them go around and introduce themselves and tell them kind of what's going on, kind of tell you what's going on and what they're doing. Uh, today's podcast, we're basically going to talk, cover, you know, how we go from R&D, developing the seed. We've been talking with Cullen and those guys a lot. How we go from R&D uh, to how, how the farmer gets the seed in the, in the bag that he's, that he's got. So, uh, so a couple of guests with me today. So go ahead and introduce yourselves around the table. Well, most people know me. I'm Lynn Crabtree, president of the company and, and have been uh, the owner of the business since November of 2005. Um, this, is a, this is a good day for me to be able to sit with these three guys and for all of you to get a chance to, uh, to uh, not that you don't, haven't met Mark or, or Jerry or Heston, but for us to spend a little bit of time together uh, because Mark, uh, special to me because my influence with the business and, and mostly the reason that I bought the business was because of the uh, nutritional knowledge that I had came to it from a con nutrition consulting uh, perspective and Mark has picked that gauntlet up and taken it several le several uh, um, uh, levels higher than where I was at with that always appreciated that from Mark and and he's always felt he's always included me in the things that were going on I've always appreciated that about you Mark that you know that you didn't need that individual accolade you've always allowed me to be a part of what you were doing Absolutely. and how you were growing and expressing yourself and so publicly I just want to say thank you to you for what you've done uh, there and how you've how you've been such a huge benefit to the company but sitting across the table from me are two guys that have been with us since virtually the beginning Jerry was our, our business we didn't own the business very long before before you was one of the very first hires Jerry came on and and, and, and I'll let you introduce yourself and, and what you do but um, you came on back in, in a period of time when, when we were just getting started. You wore a lot of hats back then, yep. and uh, that's evolved. So, Jerry, tell us. Um, my name is Jerry Hayes. Uh, I'm the production manager here in southern Illinois. Um, and I also we run MC Ag uh, out of this location too. But uh, one of my primary uh, jobs from the beginning was um, doing production here in southern Illinois. So um, I... Wore, like Len said, wore several hats. I mean, I think one of my first jobs was uh, logistics, and and I had that background in my past. But man, logistics on corn—that's a different story. So I'm sure Glass Cheryl does that now. No <laughs> doubt. No <laughs> doubt. Well, well, I'm thankful for that as well. well that <laughs> <see that? laughs> but uh, I mean, right now uh, we do uh, still do production here in Southern Illinois, and um, it's uh, it's a little bit different challenge for us here than it is in other parts of the of the country, but. Uh, we do uh, uh, do raise Good. production here. So Good. Jerry mentioned MC Ag. MC Ag, for those of you listening out there, is a full service uh, products and services organization that we that we have here with several locations around the Midwest. Uh, primary location and lead location is here, which Jerry is in charge of all of that as well. Also, we have Heston Hayes, and Heston, you've been you've been with us since since uh, early years of high school. Uh, you grew up with this business more or less, so to speak. Um, uh, my son Andrew and you were, uh, were were big time football players at Anna Jonesboro High School together. Uh, grew up together, kind of helped coach uh, baseball. I, I kind of helped coach baseball with both you guys together. Uh, so we we've kind of grown up together in 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 life and then in the business. And uh, and you're just pretty much as much of one of my kids as 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 it gets. And uh, so tell us a little bit about what you do now because you you started at the very lowest levels and you worked your way up to a pretty prestigious spot with master's choice yeah no i appreciate that lynn and thank you um for, for letting me be here today and visit with you guys um so so yeah like lynn said i started with a company about 10 years ago and and uh, kind of started working in the maintenance shop and kind of cut my teeth learning how to weld and and use a cutting torch and drive tractors and just kind of um uh, led up to where I am today. So now I'm the... the Don't forget the joys of roguing and detossling. Uh, roguing and detossling, absolutely. If there's a job in Master's Choice, I've probably done it. So uh, I remember the boys came back, uh, my boys and Heston, and I think a couple others. I think it was about five of you, and we they went up to closer to central Illinois. I think it was probably three or three and a half hour trip. Mm -hmm. We left real early of the morning and went to go up there one day to, to uh, detossel a field. And and uh, and they said they worked all day, and I, and I mean they worked all day. Well, I, I was part of that. Yeah, and got back <laughs> late at night 
and said, you know, the amazing thing about this is we sweated so much, we didn't even have to pee all day. <laughs> <laughs> benefits of the job. Benefits, yeah, benefits, yeah, yeah. benefits yeah. of the job. Yeah, so another great thing with working at Master's Choice, it's like a free gym membership. You know? Yeah, you know? yeah. Most of the guys that come down to the plant, look at the guys, they're like, wow, you guys are all really big. We're like, we just work, you know, I don't know. Like, <laughs> we don't go to the gym, we just work, you know. Yeah, so, so they, they come in and they look at me and they go, man, you're really big. And I go, well, it's a whole different kind of work than I do. Uh, yeah, right. I, I mean, the guys at the yeah, plant. Yeah, 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 I know. I just, yeah. I just want to make sure that everybody got that cleared up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, well, good. So today, basically, we, we've got everybody kind of kind of here that, that really works in and getting, you know, start how we begin with the seed to how we get everything cleaned and conditioned, uh, you know, uh, produced and all of that. So I just kind of want to talk people through that today a little bit. And just as we as we look at that. So <clears throat> on several of these podcasts, we've talked to uh, Cullen and we've talked to Kyle. And of course, I've been involved in a lot of these and how and how in R&D, you know, here we have we have Cullen and I that work together. And I said, Cullen, we need we need a plant that looks like this. And this is kind of Lynn. This is kind of where where um, where you allowed me to, to step into this business and say, and you mentored me into into the, the the nutrition expert. Can we use that term? I don't know. I mean, I can. I'm in charge. I use whatever term I want, right? Mm-hmm. So you know, you know Lynn, you, you've kind of mentored me into into a lot of my nutrition knowledge and, and understanding and all of that. And, and so using that and going to Cullen and saying we need a plant that looks like this. And then Cullen breeding and developing and working through those things. And and then and then Kyle getting it and Kyle testing it. And getting it out in different locations and testing the the agronomic strengths of that corn and then and, and then from there I get it and I say and I say okay well it meets those nutritional parameters that we want and so so here we have this hybrid built okay and and we've tested it and it has it has gone through all of those testing and then all of a sudden now we have to now we have to produce that hybrid for um for for a consumer for for a farmer for for an operation now it didn't take you long to say that but you're talking about several years of of progressions to get through all of the screening uh and the testing and and uh and protocol that exists both from the agronomic side and from the nutrition side to be able to bring to that so so several years have transpired several several years and lots of money yeah it it really has yeah Yeah. yeah. uh, you know several years and lots of money just to be able to get that one hybrid to the point where we where we hand that off to, to Jerry right. to say now now we need you now we need you to produce that so so we, we've done that okay mm-hmm. so so we've talked through some of that we've, we've looked at a lot of that um, and then and now we, we hand that off to you Jerry give us a little bit of a kind of a, a, a rundown of what that of the challenges of those the production and what production kind of actually looks like what once we have once R&D has handed that off to you okay um, you know at, at one point, you guys decided which would be the male and which would be the female. I mean, you can cross those and still produce the same hybrid, but you've determined which yeah. one will, will pollinate better or which one will silk better or whatever, receive pollen better. Yes. So that work is taken care of before it gets to me. So we may be on, um, we're on a 4 1 ratio. I mean, we're planting four females, one row male. Okay. And then we do that all the way across the field. And you've already also figured out the time period when those pollination periods are going to be to match up with that female. Okay. Uh, so, so, so pollinate, we're going to throw pollen on that male at the same time. As the female is silken. Now, is, is, can that be a challenge at time, or, or are those, I mean, do we go in and plant those all at the same time? It could be, but okay. chances are not. You know, uh, we may plant a male, maybe, um, well, it's 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 determined by the seed when it starts sprouting uh, our upshoots or you know uh, we'll get instructions from you guys to basically our planting patterns and everything like that so uh, we may be males first time out and females will follow okay. and then we'll put some more male in with that female at that time um, and we may put some more mail in at that time, according to how good that mail is for Esto and pollen. Folks probably need to understand at this point that you got two different two different parents yeah. responding to weather differently, responding to all of the, the different elements differently that, that a normal year might not express. And mm-hmm. so you may get you may get one to grow a little quicker and may want to express itself a little quicker. And if you don't have pollen, when you've got silk, you don't have you don't have seed. You, yeah. you, you missed a nick. Right. And yeah. so uh, that's a that's a that's a that's a tricky business for yeah. production. And and missing the nick happens a lot. Yeah. Or you yeah. only get part of a or of, of an ear field. Right. And that's the one reason why we may spread 
spread those males out too. Uh, uh, so you when know. you say when you say spread those males out, what we're talking about is okay. So we may plant a row of the males, mm -hmm. come back a couple of days, a couple of days, three days, three whatever. Days, whatever. Plant plant Another. four rows of female. No. Uh, well, yeah. I mean, if we plant male first, yes. yeah. If we plant male, if we plant male first. Mm -hmm. um, so it could be that we plant four rows of females and, and a male at the same time. Exactly. But then we come back on top of that same row of mm -hmm. male and plant more. Right. Yeah. It, we've got a planter set up for split row, basically. Okay. Uh, it's it's set up on a three point hitch type setup on our tractors, and we just straddle the four rows and plant those two rows of males again, and we do that all the way across the field. And that, that spreads that pollen out. How many, how many, what is the most times you have ever planted a male? Three times. Three times. Yeah. So so come back in and, and, and to make sure that we've got, that it's gonna pollinate at the same time. So right. so just making sure that we're, that we're gonna have pollen in there. And so you may, and, and so is that, I plant males on Monday and then I plant them again on Friday? Well, again, that varies too. Uh, how the seed comes out of the ground. Yeah. I mean, you're you're constantly walking the fields, checking your your seed germination if it's germinating. How it, you know in a cool wet spring you can't go by basically what your instructions yeah, say. Yeah, what the book say. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you right. still got to go out there and check your seed yep. and see if it's you know sprouting and 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 you go off the size of the length of the sprout or if it's coming through the ground. I mean, there's different. Uh, you know, indicators, indicators that okay. you guys has determined yeah. that will match up to that 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 growing Make season. Sure. Okay, so 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 now we've got it planted. We've mm -hmm. got we've got the four rows of female. We got the male planted, and maybe even up to three times planted mm -hmm. planted on top. Right. So so then so then what what's next? So it starts to come up, mm -hmm. and then what are you, what are you looking for next? What what what's the next step there? Um, basically, you're making sure you got a good stand all the way across it, and and it it's not like you're. Uh, hybrid field. You know, most guys, if they have a drowned out area, they'll go back in and replant that area. I mean, if we tried to do that, I mean, it's just really hard to try to match everything up. Yeah. So you get what you get, either that or you start all over. Okay. You know, tell the people just a little bit about parent seed, Jerry, because people yeah. think about planting corn and what it looks like when it's coming up, and they're thinking about hybrid corn and hybrid vigor and you know early, quick emergence, and they're, and, and they're thinking about robustness of that corn and how it's going to shade the row. And what you deal with on the production side, you know, oftentimes look much different than that. It's a lot uh, wimpier, skimpier. Yeah, yeah, the Bigger on the, uh, an inbred is not uh, nothing like a hybrid. I mean, it don't bounce out of the ground quick or nothing like it. And we, you know, we've tried to do uh, different things over the years uh, in row fertilizer uh, to try to help increase the vigor and, and get it out of the ground faster. And um, you know, your applications. Yep, yep. To kick it. Yep, yep. And you know, we try to we treat the plant just like we do a hybrid, but it's just because it, um, the fact is the inbreds are a little bit wimpier, as you say. We got a, we got a baby them just <laughs> oh, yeah, a little yeah. bit more. I mean, it, it's a, I mean, it's not like going, you know, going out in the field uh, like a farmer planting early in the spring and he may come back as a drive-by yeah, yeah. <laughs> and look at his field at 60 mile an hour. Yeah, that looks like it's got a pretty good stand and just keep on going. I mean, we're constantly walking the fields, making sure everything is timing right. Okay. And we have missed, you know, our timing because of weather. I mean, it, you know, if it's raining and we need to be planting, I mean, we've come back in and bush hogged uh, the females back or the males back to, to, to match that back up. Yeah. Slow them down. Slow them down, right. Then so, so, so you get them going, you get them up, okay. So, mm -hmm. so then you, and you're babying them pretty right. much. So, and and you're making sure that they're going to match up. Uh, and you know, are we are are we going in with a lot of foliar applications? Are we doing fungicide? Are yep. we doing insecticide? Yeah, yeah. And, and and usually, if, if we're raising like a white cob corn, uh, seems like they're a little bit more acceptable to. Um, Especially the inbreds, uh, as far as any kind of disease. So okay. we're we're fungiciding that dude several times through the season. Sometimes we can find a little more sensitive to herbicides. We got to be a little yep. careful on herbicide selection when yep. we're keeping. And, and we got to you know it's it's difficult to keep fields clean when yep. you don't get row shading you right. know mm -hmm. as right. much as you would with a hybrid. Yeah, and that's another thing. I mean, your inbreds. I mean, they just don't get as big and robust right. as a hybrid does. I mean, you, you, we've had some inbreds, uh, females, that may only get about chest high as they're full of growing season. And then you go in there and detossel that dude. <laughs> yeah, it's it's about two foot tall, then right. you know. Yeah, yeah. So 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 here here you talk about that. We get it up, mm -hmm. and, and 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 then we have to detossel. So right. we have 
So we have to pull the tonsils out of well, the female. Well, actually, we'll go out and rogue before we ever detoxify. Okay, so too. Ro roguing. What? Yeah. I mean, we'll, we'll hire you know a group of kids or, or adults, or, and we've had both come in, and we we hire a, probably about fifty people during the summer sometimes according to the number of the crop or acres that we've got growing but we have done as much as 75 i think at one time and they they'll come out as a roguing crew and they'll walk that field and they'll take all the imperfections out of it so like if you have a plant that's uh, say a foot taller than anything else or looks different than anything else out there you cut that out yeah and when 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 that grain goes into the plant, and Heston will begin to talk about that in just a little bit. When that grain goes into the plant, there's nothing that he's got in there that's going to be able to discern this hybrid from that hybrid. It, right. it, it's a it's a it's a kernel of corn. Right. But when but when we get that in the bag and that goes out there to our customers, they're not going to look the same in the field. And and that's. Th that's show absolutely up. what we have to yeah. eliminate yeah. and we've got a chance the first chance that we've got to do that is out in the field where we walk every row look at every plant anything that doesn't look like everything else gets cut down pretty labor intensive i mean it it's it's a lot of walking the field and we may walk that field two or three times uh during that growing season before it gets to tossle okay to, uh, to rogue it to make sure that there's no off types yeah, in there because once it goes to tossle and we tossle it you can't tell the difference in the plant skin, you yeah. know. So, um, uh, so in other words, they'll walk it two or three times before we ever get to detoxing. Which, you know, Mark, you've seen some of our parent expansion fields, yes. and you see how heavily that they try to, how, how we try to isolate those uh, yep. and keep those clean and and uh, and keep any off types out of there, any stray pollen that might come in, mm -hmm. so that he's got as little of that to have to deal with in the production side. Exactly. We take care of that when we're yep. blowing up production seed. Yep. Yep. And, 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 and being in southern Illinois, that sometimes is, is a benefit if we get good weather conditions to be able to blow up that parent seed yep. because we can we can isolate those things on, in a, you know a, with trees around them and, and, and not have some places where there's a lot of pollen. So my two and a half year old grandson and I was out in a production and it was out in a it was in a parent expansion field the other day and uh, and, and, and we, we got great isolation we had uh, we had a lot of tree barrier around and then didn't have any other corn pollen close feeling really good about this expansion because it was really going to be clean jerry was going to be so pleased when you know when he would get to that or john or whoever uh, our the grower was that was going to get that corn for us and he and i started uh, up there with the tractor going to clean that up a little bit and we started chasing deer out of that yeah, out of that plot that was... and 38 deer later you know we, we discovered that we you know they, they were pretty well feasting on that plot yeah we, you know yep so in other words it's a high sugar content yield <laughs> it was a yield reduction uh, a little deer blight it was, uh, it was they, were, they were rogue in that field pretty <laughs> yeah. so so we get that we get it we get it rogue we get right. that field we get that field rogue we want we want everything kind of uniform so we make sure that when we make that hybrid cross that 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 they all look the same right, right. so yep. so there so so we've got that going and then and then we talk about detoxing yep. okay uh we've got um uh, three machines down here at this location and we'll run those through the field um, we start looking at plants again I mean I'm out there checking and making sure how close we are to throwing a, po or a tossel out and we usually start when it's just starting to come through the the last leaf there yeah, okay and uh, we'll go out there and do a light skim basically just kind of level up the field just to make sure when everything does start coming through the the last leaf it'll it'll all come out together so, so, so we're we're basically going out and removing the the, the tossel off of those female. off of those female plants, right? Because we don't want that pollen. Mm -hmm. we, we don't want her to pollinate herself. We want that male row exactly. that we've planted to to throw to throw pollen on on her. Okay? Exactly. Yeah. And and so um, and and we call her the female because we basically take off. The, 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 the tassel, tassel, which is the male part of the plant, mm -hmm. right? And, and so, so we, we, we take that off, and, and now, do we do that mechanically, or do we do that by hand? I mean, we, is, we, we is do it mechanically. Okay. Uh, actually, we start out mechanically. Okay. Uh, we'll run the machines usually over over three times. We have been in situations where we have a bunch of rain during detoxing time. And we've we got to run the machines more just so the crews can stay up with it. Okay. So basically, we don't want that cross contamination at all. So I mean, it doesn't matter if it's raining or whatever. We're running and. 
crews are walking too. <clears throat> but it doesn't matter. Four wheel drive out there pulling those. You've got uh, Mark. I don't know for I don't know if everybody is familiar. I know that you are. You've got two wheels, one running clockwise, one running counterclockwise up against each other, and that goes right down over the top of that, right down over the top of those of those rows of plants, and just. Pulls those tosses I'll tell you what, right it, out tell you what it reminds me of is when I was a kid, we used that pitching machine. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> with the with the two rubber wheels spinning, yep. you know, and and you you just you feed balls in. That's kind of what it. That's yep. kind of what it is. And mm -hmm. and one running one way, run running the other, and, and basically just runs through that field and just pull pulls those. Instead tosses of grabbing up. a ball and throwing it at you, it's yep. grabbing a toss and flipping yep. it up in the air. Yep. Yep. Right. So <clears throat> we'll run those over the fields usually three times. That's basically what we do. <clears throat> and crews are still coming in there right behind us the third time and they'll start walking the field taking okay. anything out the machines missed and because there is some that we miss yeah. they're again trying to purify that crop as much as what we can and um, and then they'll they'll walk through and, and pull all the tassels out that uh, is remaining there now you, you, you made a statement there about purifying that as much as we can and, mm -hmm. and that's exactly what we're headed for what about now, do we have to have somebody, an, out, an outside party, come in and certify some of those crops and, we do, and, say, we do. and say that we're doing a good job? Yep, yep. Okay. They'll, they'll actually come in and inspect the fields, and they also look at the, the pollen flying and the silks and everything else, and they count the days basically all the way through when it starts to do its uh, pollinating and, and silking. So they're certifying that crop as we're going through all this, too. So okay. there again, it's another trip that somebody's got to make across the field. Yep. That uh, that we get asserted by them, you know, and, and I think I, I, so. I, I want to say this and make sure that I say it as as, as gentle as I can, right? Okay, and this ought to be good. We, we, uh, <laughs> you know, um, so we're we're talking about you know a guy, a, a farmer oftentimes looks at, at a bag of seed and he goes, man, this I don't how could how could you charge so much for this bag of seed? You know, because all, he, all he's thinking about is, you know, I'm, I'm going out, I'm putting it in my planter, I'm getting my fertilizer down, I'm doing all that. And then, and then, like you said, he gets it in and then he looks at it 60 miles an hour for the next two or three months. Mm -hmm. And then he, then he starts looking for harvest time. He doesn't, I think a lot of guys don't understand what all goes into this. Not only do we have money invested in, in developing what's going on in that field but then we've got all of this money and all of this time uh invested in in just producing that mm -hmm. and and then and then we get to the point where we've gone over it so many times and then we've got to pay somebody to come in and certify that mm -hmm. and, and and then we and then we get to harvest okay yeah. and, and so harvest is a completely different ball game for for a production field well, walk us through that jerry okay um when we um we usually try to pick our uh, production corn, you know, somewhere in the mid 30% range. And yeah. that way it's- For uh, moisture. For moisture, yeah. So we're trying to get it out of the field so we've got control of it. Okay. And not only that, it uh, it shells less in the head that way. You're picking wet. It damage, you know, as far as damage control, when it gets to Heston, it's, it's less to get damaged or anything like that. So we're taking precautions. And you're, and you're picking it on the ear. Pick it on the ear. Okay. And we've got picks all pickers, what we call pick saws and uh, we pick it and it's all the the heads are actually got rubber gathering reels on it uh, chains yep. instead of chains it's got rubber and uh, so that's helping preserve the 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 seed again mm -hmm. you know um, then we put it in the dump carts dump carts you know then put it in the semis and then they go to the Heston but we just we actually after we get done detossling the corn we go back in and destroy the males okay we take those completely out of the system so when we're picking this corn we're not having to deal with the male it's not even in the the equation there as far as trying to get a cross contamination there even so okay. we take those completely out of the field and then you know when there, we're picking, we're picking just females. There are a lot of steps. A lot of passes, yeah. And a lot of passes mm -hmm. and, and a lot of checking and looking and making and, and babying that goes that all goes into just producing that producing that mm -hmm. that seed that's gonna go that's gonna go in that bag. You know, we, here we are taking it on the ear, we're taking it for uh, at that like I said, thirty percent moisture. moisture, high moisture. Also that that we don't that we don't crack it, because we crack that seed, we damage that seed. We, we get no germination out of it. Right. Right? Yeah. And, and so, so so you pick it, you put it in a dump cart, 
that dumb car puts it in, um, a, semi -trailer. in, in a semi trailer, and then, and then what happens? Uh, that all sounds really good, guys. Except you know, the, the average guy out here listening is, is probably thinking 180, 200 bushel corn, mm -hmm. you know, because that's what he's harvesting. <laughs> yeah, uh, about, you, about, about, you, about 50 uh, is on the top side. <laughs> yeah, and, and you've harvested a lot less than 50. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, we've harvested around 10. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and so here you have you've developed this. We, you know, we spent money to develop it. We spent all of this time and money to produce it, mm -hmm. and then and then all we're really getting is, it, I mean, on a on a good year, fifty bushel is just. I mean, that's, that's fifty good. bushel to the acre is good. We can take. We have a lot of fields that got no bushels. Right, right, and 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 it, and it you know. Pollination, I mean, is hitting the neck and everything like that is very, very crucial. And if we happen to get a hot spell during that time period, I mean, here going back to our inbreds, they're not designed to handle stress very well. So the pollen flying during hot weather, as anybody's been around the cornfield, it does not fly very good when it's a hundred degrees outside. Yeah. So, uh, and then you've got you know you've got folks that have got their favorite hybrid that are counting on you to be able to produce it, and you've made your best effort, and you've put plenty of acres in the ground to be able to produce it, and then you know you run out, and, yeah. and guy guy wonders how in the world could you do that? You know, if if you if you walk in our shoes for just a little bit, you know, and hopefully this this podcast helps with that a little bit too as well. Uh, it, it's not hard. I mean, we right. we, we we come up striking out. Time to time, time, to time. and You're right. and it's not because we don't want to have your favorite hybrid available for you. It's it, not like we're dangling it out there with a carrot that you can't get to. It's just that there's a lot of challenges that that have to be uh, that have to be met to be able to produce. Okay. Well, I mean, and back up here just a little bit because we was talking about passes there a while ago. I mean, uh, we raise this corn even though it may have a trade on one side or the other. We still treat it as a non-GMO corn. Okay. So our uh, chemical input would probably be a little bit higher there too because we can't spray Roundup on it. We can't spray uh, Liberty or anything like that. Uh, so for weed control, so we're. Uh, probably spending a little bit more money up front as far as herbicides there. Not only that, once we start detosseling, we're running spray rigs across this field a lot. I mean, we're about every three days we're hitting it with an insect spray. Because okay. that way we're trying to eliminate any kind of uh, insects. We're, earworm is our biggest threat, yeah. uh, basically, yeah. because if it starts deteriorating, are deteriorating the kernels on a ear. I mean, we've lost that. Yeah. So, I mean, we are really trying to put um, uh, insect spray out there uh, pretty regular and right. fungicide. Right, right. And so, so we're, we're treating this a little bit different than, yeah. than, than regular production. So it's, so it's, it's more expensive to produce and we're getting less out of it than what most people would get, than what people get out of a hybrid field. Right. And, and I think that that's something that a lot of people just, just don't uh, just well, don't it doesn't get. register. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah. Because it, it, you know, and, and 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 it's just a lack of understanding. I mean, right. it's 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 that's that's what it is. Well, I didn't know that before we started doing this. Yeah, I mean, there's I mean, a lot of you, guys. You buy a bag of corn. Yeah, and there's a lot of guys who have farmed for a lot of years who didn't understand everything that goes in mm -hmm. that goes into this, and and uh, that's just kind of the way that it is. So so we get it. We 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 get it produced. We we've gone over it. We we've, we've spent all of that time and money, and then we put it in uh, in a semi. We put it in a trailer, and then it goes to the production plant. Right. Yeah. So if you if you thought that was a lot of steps, Mark, uh, just bear with me. And we'll we'll work through all the steps that goes through the processing plant. So good, good, good. Uh, Absolutely. So yeah, like you talked about, uh, we'll receive the corn at the high moisture at the plant. Um, it's in a dump truck. Um, it, it dumps into a, a, a bed that, that slowly drags that seed or the, still on the ear. Shucks on it. Shucks on it. It looks nasty. Well, you got stock. Not just ear corn. Yeah. You got shuck on it. Yeah. So the so the whole thing is going to be coming through the system and and kind of what we've got to, to kind of condense that a little bit. Um, we've got a machine set up to take the husks off the machine. Okay. So we've got a husking bed, uh, an A and K husking bed, uh, twelve lane that that removes the husks from the from the ear. Um, and it's just kind of a it's kind of a roller system too that 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 ear comes down in and it just rolls and just peel, peels the the husk off of. Yep, correct. Okay. Yep. Um, so right after that machine, we have what's called the sorting sorting table. Um, so we've usually got about six or eight guys working the sorting table, and what they're doing, um, they're they're checking for anything that comes across there that still has the husk on it. Okay. Um, because we're we're not going to be able to dry that ear very well with the husk still on that. So. We have an option to kind of recycle that and it'll run back through the system to get another chance 
of taking the husk off. Um, and then they're also looking for anything that, uh, any imperfections. So this is our last chance uh, to take anything out. Um, that may be an off type. That may be an off type. So okay. there could make, you know, may got some straight pollen in there that, so, so we're going to look at the ears and, and see if there's any, any color difference in the kernels, any color difference in the cobs. Um, if there's anything different, the, that's the last if, chance. If, if most cobs that are going through there are this long and you get one that's this long or, or this long, you go ahead and pull Correct. those out because that's probably an off type. What, what, what's your saying down there? What's that? What's your saying? Oh, when in doubt, throw it out. When in doubt, throw it out. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So after that point, we're married to it. So so the guys at the table do a really good job there. And, uh, you know, for us, some of the local farmers by Mark and, and, and down there to Huskin Bed, and it's it's rapid fire, man. I mean, yeah. that, you know, that corn is coming across or semis waiting to, to dump corn. And, and these guys are, these guys are, 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 are you know, hands are flying and it's kind of a blur. And you bring a guy down there and, and the ears that are going across, you know, are these are these little nubbin ears, you know, and they're all just like that. And then, and then there may be a, a, a nice ear and, and that gets thrown in the junk, trash and these guys' eyes are lighting up, you know, and they're going, why throw the good stuff out? That's what I want, you know. <laughs> Well, I, you know, if you don't get this little one, you're not going to get that big right, one. You know? Right, right, exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, so that's a so pretty important step for us there, and uh, and the guys working that table do a really, really good job, and our testing has proven that yeah. over the years. Um, so once it comes across the sorting table, um, it's just the year of corn, um, and it's and it's wet. It's about that thirty percent moisture. Um, so from there it goes to our drying bins. Um, and our drying bins, we, we and it's all con it's all conveyor. I mean, we're not. It's not auger. It's it's rubber conveyors. Correct. Okay. Yep. Absolutely. Um, so so once it's conveyed into the to the drying bins, um, we use a so we use high air and a little bit of heat. Okay. Um, so we want to. So the, for the first day, once it gets picked, uh, we're going to put on just air. So we're going to kind of give that corn a chance to, to kind of calm down and get acclimated to what's going on here. Um, so then once we get air on it for a day or two, then we're going to start adding a little bit of heat. Um, and we'll, we'll heat that bin up to about 110 degrees. Okay, so it'll go that high. Yep. So why? So when a guy is drying corn, when a farmer's drying corn in his bin, he's not watching temperature necessarily. And he's using a lot more heat. And than he's one. using a lot more heat than that. Yeah. So why why don't we use so much heat to get this process taken care of real fast? So so if you if you take your your ear of corn that's thirty percent moisture and you want to dry it down to twelve percent or thirteen, that's what we want to get it to. If you do that in a very quick amount of time, that's going to cause that. Uh, kernel to shrink up or crack okay. and it can cause a lot of damage okay. um, during that period so we want to take it nice and slow we'll put a lot of air um, we'll stir that bin a little bit get in there and manually rake it around um, and it takes about five to seven days uh, depending on the temperature of course outside yeah. and the humidity and things like that but typically five to seven days we'll take a take a hybrid that's 30 percent and dry down to 12 or 13 and then at that point we'll pull it out and shell it so okay so you, you pull it out you pull it out of the bin mm -hmm. and, and it's and it's ear corn so it's not like it's flowing flowing like regular corn right yeah so so we so we designed uh so our drying bins are, are round bins with uh slanted floors with a conveyor in the center of it okay. um so as we're pulling it out um that that corn is very dry at this point um so as we're pulling it out it kind of just avalanches down you kind of poke around and, and the corn will come on out um so there again, we're using conveyor belts. Uh, we're conveying it from the drying bins to our custom seed sheller um, for seed corn production. So this was a design uh, for us to to shell the seed, but it's going to do it in a gentle manner. Okay. So it's not like your a lot of guys say it's, it's not like the, your combine. A lot of guys look at it and say, "Oh, it's the guts of a combine on stands." Well, it it is in a sense, but it's designed to be a little more gentle. And it's got a, some added features to that to kind of take out some of that trash, the screenings, that chaff, uh, initially before we put that into a bin um, and wait for processing. So, an interesting day when uh, when when the bins were going up, and 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 Hessen and I sit down and we designed what we wanted the unloading system to look like. You know, we wanted that. You know, the the, the, the round bin is up here. We yeah. wanted that conveyor out of the middle and bringing it out and dropping it on a on a on a on a common run common run conveyor out front and and so how do you get that it's not a flat floor bin 
here, yeah. you know. Yeah. It's a sloped floor bin. So all of those years of, of, of math that he had in, in high school and in college came in through with the geometry and being able to design. There are no kits out there that, that take us to take a round bin with a sloped floor to the, you know, to, to, to one side. There was a, there's a lot of... A lot of angles, a lot of cuts. Yeah, so that of, was a lot of fun. That was, was kind of my first big project um, that I took on, uh, and I think I was about 21 years old. So of course I said I can do, I can do this. Yeah, I can yeah. do this. I got this. I got this. I got this. So, uh, so I remember him getting on the tractor one time. I got this. Yeah. <laughs> and about five minutes later, he's like, "Come here." Right. <laughs> <laughs> but we're not going to talk about that. Uh, <laughs> but we are talking about. And when you get the first one done, he said, "How many more of these are we going to have?" You know? well, so, so that, so that's that's another thing that I, that I think that that is. Um, that's really cool about our, our production team. There's a it, there's a lot of stuff like you said. There's no kits for, and, and even if there was a kit for, it would be really expensive. I think you know not only do these guys condition corn and that, but but they're almost they're they're almost quasi voodoo engineers down there. I mean I mean. They, the, the plant down there is just amazing, and the people that have toured it are, you know, are, are, are equally amazed. And, and what is so cool about it isn't that these guys are just sharp enough to be able to engineer it and then turn around and build it, you know, um, because let's just be truthful about this. You know, a, a young company up starting and getting going, you know, we didn't have the resources that a lot of the other players in the, in the industry had. These guys allowed that yep. to happen yep. by applying themselves and being able to, to build the facility that, that, that goes into all of our conditioning and, and does a superb job. Mm -hmm. uh, quality is, 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 you know, has no peer. Yep. Yep. But they designed it, they built it, and the neat thing about it is, as everything is running down there, who knows it better? Than the guy that designed, designed it, it and, and built, built it, it. No you know, doubt. to keep to keep it running, no to to identify, you know, any issues. I mean, it's so fun to be down there, Mark. You and I've been down oh, there yeah. before. Oh yeah. And, and and one of the guys that are managing one of the lines, or you know, he'll he'll kind of perk up a little bit, like he heard something, you know, and we have no idea what he's doing. Next thing we know, you know, we've got a maintenance guy over there replacing a bearing, and and ten minutes later, you know, they avoided a a, a, a lengthy shutdown because they identified a problem and fixed yep. it before it became an issue. No doubt. And uh, just just something that one of those things Heston that that you have brought to the table and your and your team and an excellent team uh, that has just been unique in the industry and has and has helped set us apart Definitely. and allowed us to get to a position where we're at today yeah no I appreciate that and you know the unique thing is you know you're not gonna find that anywhere else you know you're not gonna find those opportunities as a young guy uh, coming into a business like this and say, well, I can do this. Give me a chance. You know, any under in industry or company would probably say, no, you've got to do your time and, yeah. and work your way up. Well, we have done our time and worked our way up, but we've been given opportunities to succeed and to fail. Yeah. Um, and so I know I appreciate that. And <clears throat> the neat thing about working out the plan is like, like you guys have talked about, we design and engineer and, and fabricate everything ourselves. We try to do as much as we can in house. So, you know, some of my best electricians are my main processing guys, yeah. you know, my warehouse guy, who's probably a little bit OCD, which is great is one of my best engineers, you know, a little bit. He's a lot. Better. A little bit of CD. <laughs> yeah. And for those of you who don't know, that's Zach Plot. Yeah, so Zach, we love yeah. you, Zach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But a uh, little, little bit was generous. Yeah, yeah. But that's what you want in a warehouse guy exactly. and an engineer guy. Um, you know, and, you know, processing guys, you know, they're very methodical. They're very they're very persistent about what, what's going on. They're always looking for ways to make things better or changes and, and always making sure that the, the product that we're putting out is the best. So those guys end up being your best carpenters or yeah. painters or all those things because they're so meticulous um, and you know thankfully Lynn's given us given us that opportunity to do those things so no. so so you got so you got it shelled now we we we, we kind of we kind of keep going around sure. this bush, yeah, yeah. but it's okay so so we 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 got it shelled and mm -hmm. then and then after it's shelled what, what do you do with it so so once the seed is shelled we have we have 30 grain bins on our property most of those grain bins are 3500 3,500 bushel grain bins. Um, so, so as we shell the seed, uh, we'll also be receiving seed from our uh, central Illinois fields or, or northern Illinois fields um, to bring down here to process. So once the seed's in the bins, we'll get a good game plan with our general manager, uh, Cheryl, and our CEO, Kevin, to kind of determine what hybrids we need to be processing first. Depending on who's going to order what and, and what. Correct. Yeah. Yep. 
So typically we'll do our fuller season hybrids first, but a lot of this depends on um, harvest of the, you know, inbreds and, and when those come in and, and when we can get those processed. So there's a lot of things in play, but... A lot of juggling that goes on here, you know, the, the, the yeah. we, we, Heston doesn't have enough, Heston doesn't have enough facility to hold all of the corn that's going to get conditions right. so right. a lot of steps have to work through from from when when the corn gets harvested and where and 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 because not all the corn is grown here not all the corn is conditioned at his plant but there's a lot of juggling maneuvering that goes in there so hats off to Cheryl once again for logistics uh, and John Weidick our, our uh, um, the production manager up in central Illinois you know for helping work with Jerry and Heston to yeah. coordinate those things because yeah. of, well and, and then and not only that but sales our, our sales guys get you know you know because they're like wait it's it's raining in Florida and, and it's going to be weeks before they can plant. What we need is something for Kansas because it's dry there and those guys are ready to plant. Well, you know, and, and, and I know that there's a lot of times that, that, uh, that the guys down at the, uh, uh, at the plant, man, they're just like, well, you told us we needed these first, right? Right, yeah. 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 And, and, and so, but I, I appreciate the fact that, that we're, uh, you know, a, enough gelled as a company that we can go in that and, and you guys understand that. Oh, sure. And, We're very flexible. Yeah, yeah definitely. And, and, and so, um, so definitely appreciate that, especially as I'm out and about talking to guys who are, who are on the farm and, uh, and are needing that seed, mm -hmm. uh, right, right when they, you know, right when they need it. So appreciate you guys being flexible with that, but there's a lot of logistics on which one are we going to run first? How are we going to get all of these through? Because we don't have enough room for, for everything. And so, so you guys, you guys have to have to prioritize what what hybrid you're going to be cleaning first so you prioritize that you get it say these are the ones that we've got to do take it out of that out of that uh, out of that bin and then and then what happens to it it kind of a place everything at a time Tom. I'm sorry I interrupted you but no. but kind of kind of place everything in timetable here Good. We're, we're, we're sitting here the first day of September and you've already you've already conditioned you've already started conditioning correct yeah we started our master grace conditioning which was an early harvest for us this mm -hmm. year um, which turned out really well so for those guys listening that love the master grace I'm not gonna say there'll be plenty because I'm not a sales guy but <laughs> harvest was the best I've seen for as long as I've been here so good. looking really good good all right so uh, so, so we get it shelled, we take it out of that, that holding bin, and then, and then where do we go from there with, with that corn? So from there, if it's a conventional or traded hybrid, we'll run that through our plant that's designated for that. We've also got a certified organic plant down in our uh, property that, that we'll run all the organic seed through. So um, the, the equipment that the, the seed run through is, is almost identical in both plants. Okay. Um, Obviously, the organic is separate from everything else, but the, the equipment that that runs through is about the same. So, so as seed enters the plant, it runs through a series of equipment that's gonna that's gonna clean that seed um, and that's gonna size that seed. So the first one's gonna pull a high volume of air through it. As the seed trickles through it, that's gonna take a lot of your dust, a lot of your trash out initially. Uh, and some probably some of the little small seed and like light seed that doesn't yeah a little bit will come out in that step um and then from there to go to our to our seed cleaner it's a it's our clipper seed cleaner and it's got a series of screens in that so that's where our small seed will come okay. out or crack seed will come out or anything very large will also come out depending on what size screens we put in this machine um, and we'll do all that preliminary testing before it ever comes in the plant to know what size screens we need to be putting in our clipper and our seed sizer wow. so um, there's quite a bit of testing goes in before it even gets into the plant as well we we, we missed over that a little bit but um, once it goes from the clipper cleaner, it'll go through a series of sizers. Um, and what the sizers do is that's going to size our seed uh, basically out in four different sizes. So it's going to separate our large flats, our large rounds, our small rounds, and our small flats um, into four separate holding tanks. Um, and then that's where we generate our lot numbers from within a hybrid. So once that seed's separated within its own size, um, there'll, there'll be no more blending at that point. It'll all stay by itself at that point. Okay. Um, and that and that's when a seed is assigned a lot number. That's correct. Yep. So so once that seed's separate, um, that's where we do some more of our testing with our with our non-GMO um, stuff. That's where that's where we'll get those samples from. So, so once we kind of get a lot assigned to that seed, mm -hmm. then then we then we begin to test for the quality of that seed, whether it be non-GMO, how how if it's contaminated or not contaminated. Mm -hmm. um, 
what other what other tests do we do we run at that? So we'll do some trade tests if it's if it's traded seed to make sure that 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 vigor is in that okay. um, as well. Um, so once it's in the sizer tanks, it'll go to our last cleaning step. One thing that we want to encourage people to do is they're buying seed. Those lot numbers are on every are on every container, whether that's a box or a tote or a bag. That lot number is identified there. Yeah. Jot those things down, or get your or get your sales guy to jot those things or, down. Or save the tag. Yeah, absolutely, because then we can track that seed back. And, and Heston does a great job. Uh, John up at uh, up, up at St. Joe, they do a great job of tracking that seed, yeah. keeping you know. And, 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 you know, trait purity, non-GMO verified seed, you know, organic purity, all of those things are, are tracked. Warm, cold germination is all tested. It's all tracked. And, we, and we've got and we maintain those samples for a period we, of time. We can even know, we can even tell from that lot number where that seed was produced. Oh, exactly absolutely. what field that, that, that seed was produced in and, and, and all of those things. Is that yeah, absolutely, and and so for for the for organic certification, there's there's quite a paper trail that's okay. involved um, with tracking it from the field, from the producer, you know, all the way from what truck brought it to the plant and what grain bin it went into, and the day we pulled it out, and there's cleaning oh, right, logs, there's there's, yeah. there's so much involved um, to to keep track of you know what that's, happened. That's something that we didn't touch on was the cleaning. So you 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 run you run this hybrid through through the, the sheller, you've got to clean that sheller out before you run another hybrid through. Oh, all the way from the husking bed. Yeah. Um, we start there, and, and everything we do at the plant gets kernel clean. Every grain. Yep. Yeah. Yeah every, every kernel, yeah, every time every time we switch hybrids or, or we switch um, a, a trait package from, I mean, we may have the same hybrid, but it, maybe we've got a GT or a 3000 GT. We've got to, we got to clean it out every, every oh, time absolutely. It, yeah. it's something different than that. Yeah, we should really buy stock in shop backs because we go through shop backs <laughs> uh, a couple dozen a year, just vacuuming everything out. So, so. so not only are we going to, I mean, so we just made a recommendation for, for guys to, to go ahead and, and buy, buy stock in shop backs, sure. right? Yeah, so we're absolutely. making financial recommendations now. Yeah, of course. Alex isn't here, but I feel like <laughs> yeah, I'm qualified. I feel comfortable. Yeah. I feel comfortable and qualified in this. Sure. Yeah. You, would talk, you mentioned organic. You've had quite a you've had quite a summer with the organic line. You've uh, we we've basically sold out, Mark, our, yep. our organic seeds. Um, pretty much, we sold out everything the first day that, that um, the almost. first of September yep. a, a year yep. ago. Everything in organic was sold out. We increased organic production. Um, Considerably, considerably. <laughs> yeah, I think three yeah. X. I'm not even sure how we got Alex to prove that, but uh, yeah, we, we we're going to find a ceiling where 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 we uh, where we will settle out in in terms of organic production. But you spent a lot of summer increasing your organic line, organic capacity, organic mm -hmm. efficiency, speed. You know, you're going to that line's going to be going to be at least tripling what it, 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 it did last year. So Yeah, yeah. So things at Master's Choice are ever-changing and growing, and we usually spend our summers either building a new warehouse or building a production line or making some pretty significant yeah. upgrades. And so that's what we've done this summer is uh, made three or four pretty significant upgrades to our actually already new organic line, but yeah. uh, things we felt necessary to invest in. So, we, so we've got those things done. Um, and those are things went really well. So yeah, no, I'm always I'm always impressed when I when I go down there and see everything that you guys have, have been doing and, and and like say every year every year there's a there's a there's a new a new project. So we, we've got we've got seed designated. We've got it a lot. It's in it's in a a, a bin where where we've got it um, kind of isolated so to speak. Mm -hmm. So we know what that is. So from from the from the sizing bin to to the end of the line, what, what happens there? Yeah, so there's one final step, uh, the cleaning step, and that goes to our 240 gravity table. Okay. Um, so we'll be running seed from that sizing tank that we that we select, um, and we'll do one at a time. So as that seed enters to the gravity table, that gravity table is using a, um, a high volume of air, and that, that oscillates back and forth to kind of separate that seed out. It's a really neat piece. Um, if, if you guys are ever around during the winter time as we're running, I encourage you to kind of take a look at that yeah. it's pretty neat to see how that operates but it'll separate good heavy healthy seed away from potentially dead or cracked or or um, damaged seed um, so from that step we that's our good seed yeah. um, and then we'll do our germ tests off that coming right off the gravity table there and we'll do several through that run to make sure we get a good accurate number there for it um, and then from there it goes either to the treater 
um, to get our seat treatment on. We we'll use the Syngenta Cruiser 250 uh, package with Vibrance, um, and we'll use a conventional seat treatment, and then seed that uh, goes through our organic line. We'll get our um, MicroMaster, um, and there again, it's all separate. It's yeah. all in different buildings, but that's kind of it in a nutshell. Um, and then it goes into a bag or box or whatever, and then there's there's a uh, lot number hybrid information and and all that good stuff right there on the bag for the farmer to farmer to see. And then and then from from there, I mean, once it's once it's we've got it tested, we know that it's viable seed. We know that it's what what is supposed to be in there. We get it treated the way the guys want it treated, and I and and so we got actually we have three different treatments, don't we? We've got we got the conventional treatment. We've got We've got what would be our standard Cruiser 250 mm -hmm. with Vibrance, and then we have MicroMaster, which gets put on all of our or, organic corn. Mm -hmm. uh, so we've got that that treatment too, and so those all those things have to be have to be designated out. And so then we, we put it in a bag, and you guys do a great job stacking pallets and, and doing that, wrapping them, and then it's ready. It's basically ready, or a box or whatever. It's basically ready to go we'll go to the producer from there, yep. and. Um, you know, one of the things that I think is really important that we that we've got to touch on here is that all the way through this, all, all the all the way through this process, even from even from research and development to 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 production to processing, you know, our end goal is to put the best seed in, in that bag. That, that that so that when the farmer plants that he he's not only going to get he's not even going to get genetic potential of the quality of that uh, of that the feedability of that seed but he's going to get seed that's been cleaned and processed and, and and produced in a way so so that he gets the best stand that he can get so that he can get the most yield out of that you know and um, and so all, all of this is done for him mm -hmm. you know for, for for the for the producer and and not just uh, not just something to give somebody a job i mean we we are we are, we are all focused on making sure that wet seed that goes in the ground is going to be the best it can be. Oh, absolutely, yeah. You've done a lot of research, too, on seed treatments. You know, the Maxim Quattro package is what you were saying is standard treatment. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, it's, uh, that it, it's, it's, from our research, by far the superior standard seed treatment in the industry. I mean, most people think standard, they think of neonic, you know, so they're thinking about thinking about the cruiser package being added, but you have that standard Maxim Quattro, the best in, in insecticide, fungicide, you know, uh, on the marketplace. And then we come along with the, with the, uh, with the cruiser package on top of that with vibrance and, and, uh, yep. you know, it, it's a, that's a really high quality, high quality seed treatment, uh, that, that we feel like we want to, we feel like we have the best quality seed. We want to make sure, sure that we've got the best quality seed treatment on Correct. there to give that seed the best chance. Absolutely. Guys, I, I, I really appreciate you joining me today um, and really appreciate you taking time out to, to do this. I think this was awesome. Great information. Uh, just just really thank you all. Any, any last words, any last comments that, that any of you want to make? No, I think I'm good. I'm just ready to get this processing season underway. Absolutely. As my guys are chomping at the bit. They've been idle all summer doing projects, so they're ready to process some corn. Yeah, what so. you call idle and what I call idle are not the same thing. No, no, they are not the same. <laughs> See, the, the eclipse is over, the fun's over, you yeah. know, the, everybody that invaded southern, this part of southern Illinois, as a matter of fact, yep. was, was where they had, we had the longest view of the eclipse, you know, uh, yep. of anywhere in, anywhere in the country. So we got, we got a lot of visitors in here for the last, uh, you know, for the last few days. But the eclipse has passed. Everybody's gone back home, and now we're back at work. Time to go to work. Yeah. Time, time to go. All right, guys. Hey, appreciate it. Hey, want to thank you guys out there for joining us today. Uh, just uh, always remember that, that we are social. Uh, find us on, on Facebook. Uh, you can find us on YouTube. And, of course, you can always find us at uh, uh, masterschoiceseedcorn.com. Uh, so appreciate you guys.